everyone, welcome back to Vlogs with Leah. I hope you're doing fantastic. And today we have a little bit of a special video because I'll be sewing a little dress using this fabric. Let me show you a bit up close. It's very pretty. I'll tell you everything about the fabric, about the pattern that I'm using, about and show you all of the sewing steps to get the actual dress uh, done. But first, let me tell you a little bit about Project Dressy Girl. So what is Project Dresser Girl? It is a charity event that will be running throughout all the month of September. This event is started by Mari from the YouTube channel Mari Sews. You might know of her already. And uh, the objective is simple, to dress as many girls as we can. These girls can be living anywhere around the world and they are usually in situations of extreme poverty and they've probably never owned a new garment of their own. So hopefully we can provide them with one. Last year, in total, they were able to donate, let me see the number so I tell you correctly, 2,363 dresses. So let's see how many we can make this year. If you're sewing dresses as well, and if you, don't forget to get them added to the count, post them on Instagram, tag at Mary Sews for Curve and use the hashtag uh, Project Dresser Girl 2023. If you don't have Instagram, I'll put her email right here as well so you can just email all the pictures and she'll get them added to the count. So now back to the dress, I will show you all of the steps that I go through to get the dress actually done. I'll give you some details as I go through it on how to create a garment that is also suitable for the project. And at the end, I'll show you proper reveal pictures because I have done some modifications, little modifications from the original pattern that I'm using, uh, because I think it makes it easier for me to sew and also makes it look a little bit neater because I'm not that good at sewing bias binding. So I'll show you at the end and you can tell me if you think it looks better or not. And so let's get into it. So first let's talk everything about the fabric. I will be using this one. It's one that I had in my session. I think it's very pretty. It will make a very pretty little dress. Uh, it is a 100% cotton. Uh, for this we want to use natural fibers. So such as a cotton or a linen or a blend of the two. So, so well, the only ask is that we don't use or uh, upcycle pillowcases. So no pillowcase fabric for the dresses. Uh, this one, there is only one issue, is I'm not sure if you can see it on camera, but when I put my hand under it, it is kind of see-through and that is a no-no. So we want to, um, we don't want to have little girls in see-through dresses, right? So what I'm going to do is line this dress and I'm going to line it on another fabric that is also 100% cotton, so entirely in white. So I tested several colors and I've already cut it. And I'll be lining it with white that, that I think will make the flowers pop up really nicely. Now let's check the pattern that I'm going to use. So now considerations when choosing your own pattern. You can choose any pattern that you want if you want to participate. I'm using uh, one that I'm going to show you uh, right next. The only thing when choosing your pattern is that it cannot have zippers, snaps, uh, buttons, anything that is liable to break that they will not be able to then fix. I'm using just this one. It closes with um, just a little tie at the back and this is perfect. So this is one of the dresses that I've already completed. And for this one, I have followed exactly the pattern that was made available by Thoughtful Creativity. Let me just pick it up. So this one, it is a free pattern that she made for the event. Uh, actually, she has another one that she made this year. This is the one from last year, if I'm not mistaken. And it's important that it has at least one pocket. Two is great, but at least one for the dresses. So I have made a little alteration to the pattern because I'm not the best at sewing bias binding. I have added uh, a seam allowance all around. Um, the pattern comes without seam allowances and I've added seam allowance to the neck and to the armholes as well. The neck, because I'll be lining the dress, so I'll be sewing the uh, main fabric to the lining and then top stitching it. And uh, the armholes, I'll just sew and then trim the seam allowance because it will make it easier to uh, get the main fabric and the lining stitched to each other before I apply the bias binding to the armhole. So let's now get to the sewing. And by the way, you can use a neat fabric as long as you use it for the bodice only and then you make the skirt out of uh, woven fabric. So here is my fabric. I have the main uh, the main fabric and the lining. This is, let me see, I have a notch. Yes, this is the back piece because I'll, as I said, I will be sewing the main fabric 
to the lining. Then I have the front and the lining respectively. I have as well my pockets. I will be uh, lining the pockets as well to make the flowers pop. And I have the ruffle. I've made my ruffle a little uh, wider than the pattern because I had to cut this one a little bit short. So it's just a little bit, but I made it longer. So uh, I will start by sewing the main fabric and the lining at the shoulders and I'll be right back then to, sh to show you how it looks. So, so I have now sewn both pieces at the armholes and I have pressed the seam allowance open. Let's see, I have pressed them open like this and I've also already cut my uh, back opening down to the notch so I can have the seam allowance around where we would have the bias binding at the back. What I'll now do is match the pieces with the right sides together and I'll pin all around the neck and all around this back opening so that I can then sew both of them together. And yeah, here are my pins, I'll pin them all together and I'll be right back. And here it is, it is pinned all around. You can see where we would have the bias binding, it is also pinned at the back. So how I'll now so now I'll sew it all around and it will be very fast because we are on YouTube land and and we are back. I actually forgot to mention at this stage we need to make sure that we add the uh, tie so that we can then close the dress. I have them sandwiched in between the layers and then sewn right here. So and yeah, this is white thread but I hope you can see. They are completely sewn all around and what I'll do now, actually at the neckline I prefer to use pinking shears so I'll cut it all around and make some notches as well here at the curve so that we can then close nicely. So let's do that. And it now looks like this. It's cleat here at the curve and it is completely, you know, with the pinking shears at the neckline. So now I'll turn it around, I'll put the lining through the neck and pull it on the other side. And this is how the neck looks like. What I do now, as you can see, it looks like this. What I need to do now is go to my iron and press it nicely before I can top stitch the neckline. And now would you look at this? It is starting to look like a dress, isn't it? This is the front and this is the back with the little ties. I think it's going to look very pretty and what I'm going to do now is sew at the armhole so I added some seam allowance there as well just so that I can attach the lining to the main fabric then I'll trim the seam allowance that I've added and I'll attach the bias binding let me be right back and here it is look at the back with the ties so top stitch here bias binding I think it is looking quite nice so far uh, my bias binding application is never the neatest, that's why I changed the neckline to avoid this. You can see here, yeah, I try my best. What I'm going to do now is sew at the sides and I'll be right back. And I'm back, the sides are now completely sewn. This is how it looks, let me put it sideways so you can see it a little bit better. And now the next step for me will be to apply the pockets so they are fully lined as well and you're probably asking wouldn't have wouldn't it have been easier to apply the pockets before sewing the sides and the answer is yes but i was too excited to sew the sides and i forgot so now i'm going to mark the placement and apply the pockets so then we can finish with the ruffle so i'll be right back and you guys, here is the little dress and how it's going. The pockets are in. It is looking quite nice, if I do say so myself. 
and all I need to do now is work on get sewing and gathering the ruffle pieces and add them down below so we're almost done so i'm going to do this uh, i confess that gathering takes me quite a while so but for you on youtube land it will be quite fast so i'll be right back so here is the dress and it seems done but there is a problem We'll go back to the dress in a second, let me just tell you about the labels. The labels are supposed to be sewn in a visible part of the garment and this serves to hopefully deter anyone that might want to hurt the girls by showing that they are working with an organization. Uh, I'll link down below the link where you can buy the labels if you can. The proceeds go directly to uh, the event as well. For example, these dresses need to be shipped to the locations at the, uh, where they are needed so that kind of money is used for that. And if you can't get a label, for example, like me, I'll be shipping my dresses directly to Mari and she offered to sew the labels for anyone that cannot get the label. So don't let the label deter you from making dresses for the little girls. Now back to the reveal shots. So here is my little dress, totally finished. Let me show you the neckline, which is the part of the pattern that I modified. So you can see if you don't think, look, my top stitching a little wonky but you can see if you think that it looks neater or not. I think that the fabric is very nice and it is a very good way, as long as you line it, let me show you, to use a fabric that you have that is suitable, but might be too sheer. You can still make a beautiful garment. As long as it is lined, it should be okay. So don't leave just yet. Let me show you the comparison with a dress that has been sewn 100% according to the pattern. So you can tell me what you think. And the dress is this one. As you can see, the main difference is in the neckline. So here we have bias binding, but sewing this part and uh, this part at the back, let me show you right here, was a little bit of a struggle for me. I'm not that good as I mentioned sewing bias binding. So that side makes it a lot uh, easier for me and also is a great way to have the dress um, if it needs to be lined. So throughout the month there will be several sewers telling you about Project Dress a Girl. Tomorrow is Adam so from Adam Sew, so you can go to his channel tomorrow to check his video. And today Mari should be doing a live unboxing of the dresses that have already been shipped to her, so you can check that as well. From my side I hope you've enjoyed the video, I upload every Friday, so I hope to see you here next Friday. Happy crafting!